Okay, question 15 here. So, we have been given 2 sine 3x equals 1, and it is told that another student has given in the solution of sine 3x equals a half, and so the inverse sine of that is going to be that 3x equals 30 degrees, and that x equals 10. Also, they've written additional solutions. Is that 180 degrees minus 10 equals 170 degrees. And they have asked you to find two mistakes with the working out. Okay, so the very first mistake is that they have not, okay, number one, so first mistake is that they have not considered the full, full interval of minus 360 greater than or equal to x, greater than or equal to 360, but only the interval of 0 uh, to 360. Okay. So, Um, which has clearly missed them out, some of the solutions there. Okay. Partly number two is that they, um, they have uh, solved, number two, they have solved the equation. equation um, for additional solutions before, oh sorry, after, after dividing by 3 rather than before. Okay. So we're now going to solve it correctly and we will see the mistakes that they have made. So they only came up with 10 and 170, which are two of the correct answers, but it's not all of the answers. So here we go. We continue down here and we get this sine 3x, okay, for, so that was part A, sine of 3x is equal to a half. Now, at this point, what you need to consider is what your sine graph looks like. Now, we're not working on a sine graph that is just uh, running from 0 to 360. It is also running backwards to minus 360. Normal sine looks like this. But in our case, because it is 3x, we will have three lots of the sine curve in here. One, two, three. Okay. And very badly drawn. All of these peaks and troughs should be at the same height. And then coming back the other way, we should also have three, one, two, three. There we go. So there's your minus 360. There's your 360. And if you were to divide 360 by 3, you get 120. So that means this point here is 120. 240 equally minus 120 minus 240. Okay, and we can do the in-betweens here of 60 and onwards. 60, 180, uh, 270. 
Okay. Did I label that one up wrong? Yes, that's my 120. That's my 60. Okay. We'll leave the zero in place. That point there is the minus two forty. Okay. So all right. So with all of that in, and it should all be equal and level and stuff, we need to put in the line of a half. Okay, so a half needs to say is sitting here. And as it comes through here and back this way, okay, we will have in the end one, two, three, four, five, six, and another six on this end, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we do have one of these solutions straight away at 10 degrees. There's our 10 degree mark. And we also worked out uh, 170 with the 180 minus 170. There we go. Okay, so what do we have here working along? Basically, we've got 10 degrees from each point uh, of where it crosses the x-axis. So this one becomes a 50, this one becomes a 130, this one becomes a 250, and this one becomes a, um, what's that, 260. Okay, so in the positive realm, we have got x equal to 10, 50, 130, 170, 250, and 260. Why don't I like that? Um, okay. Sixty two forty. That's not two seventy at all, is it? Helps if you label up your graph correctly. It's all going horribly wrong this video. Um so it should be two forty, that should be three hundred making the 260 comment that I've put down here to be 10 less, which is 290. Okay, and I've got myself in a kerfuddle with this 270 down here as well, which should also be uh, 300 minus 300. Okay, so as we come across here, we can see that this is also going to be 10 degrees on. Okay, so we have minus 70, minus 110, uh, minus 190, minus 230, minus 310, and minus 350. So we have minus 70. Minus 110, minus 190, minus 230, minus 310, and minus 350. Okay. And two For all of the answers, and all of those answers are in degrees. Okay. Question. <laughs> 
All right, let's have a little look now at what question 17 holds for us. Question 17, the diagram shows triangle ABC. Okay. Something like this. Uh, and they say AB is 11. They've drawn it in the book with A, B, C, drawn in like that. They said this is 11 centimeters. Um, BC is 6 and 7. Okay. And find the exact value of cos B, giving your answer in the simplest form. Okay, so something like this, where we've got the sides of the triangle, we are going to be looking at the cosine rule. This feels very much like chapter 9 work rather than the chapter 10 work, but that's fine. So we know that the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Okay, we're looking at angle B here, so that would be labelled up as angle A in a way. Okay, and it's going to be these two parts on the other side. These are your B and C numbers, the 6 and the 11. Okay, with your angle A squared. So we are going to have 7 squared is equal to 6 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 6 times 11, okay, cos, we'll label it up as cos b, since that's what the question is asking us for. So, 49 for the 7 squared, take away the 36, take away the 121, okay, and we get minus 108, being divided by 2 times 6 times 11, 132, and that would be a minus 132, which is equal to cos b. Um, 108 divided by 132 is 9 over 11. Okay, uh, the diagram shows find the exact value of cos b, giving your answer, right? Hence, find the exact value of sin okay so let's just consider what cos b means cos b is equal to 9 over 11 which is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse so we have got a triangle which has an angle b and it has an adjacent which is 9 a hypotenuse which is 11 which means we can find out what the opposite side would be using Pythagoras so 11 squared minus 9 squared square rooted will equal the opposite so square root 11 squared minus 9 squared is equal 2 root 10 uh, that's the opposite not zero um, so that's 2 root 10 is equal to the opposite so thus the sine so thus the sine of B 2 root 10 is equal to the opposite 2 root 10 over the hypotenuse 11 and just looking in the back of the book, they have given that out as root 40 over 11. 2 root 10, root 40, exactly the same number. Okay, because uh, 4 times 10 is 40, square root of 4 is 2, 2 root 10. Okay, so either answer is exact.